Hello, New Wave of British Heavy Metal.com here today. It's the 4th of October 2023. Quick favour to ask as usual, please, and that's if you would subscribe to the channel, that'd be a big help, appreciated. Uh, so please do click that button if you would. Today it's all about the Runaways and their fine box set, Neon Angels on the Road to Ruin, which came out just a few days ago via Cherry Red Records, who do these box sets so very well. In this one, you know, we, we've got the usual hard cardboard clamshell box. Inside it are, are the band's five albums, you know, four studio, one live, in replica cardboard sleeves. And an extensive booklet with all sorts of information, stories, photographs, and, and all the rest of it. Quality product, as always, from Cherry Red. Now, the Runaways history is, is well documented and well known. We, we all know that, don't we? So we, we won't go into it. Other than to say that, uh, you know, th th these girls were trailblazers back then, weren't they, for female hard rock bands? There weren't too many of them around in the 1970s, but the, the Runaways uh, changed that somewhat, didn't they? Oh, yes. Um, notable for having none other than Joan Jett and Lita Ford in the lineup, both of whom would go on to successful solo careers post Runaways, and until that, that third album, you know, that they, they, they were fronted by. The, the marvellous presence of and, and energetic vocals of Cherry Curry, of course. Um, and it, it's a fine overall package uh, showing how great the Runaways were with those generally spiky hard rockers with attitude, but not missing out on the melody either. And when you think that these albums were originally issued going on for fi some 50 years ago now, they stand up well given the test of time and sound fresh right now you know in in 2023 the eponymous debut album doesn't mess about does it it's it's a little over half an hour long mainly short succinct to the point no mucking about rockers we're, we're starting with the classic cherry bomb we all know that don't we um and, and you know all right that what what follows that it is generally in a similar style you know lot, lots of fun lots to enjoy uh, that, that, but Dead End Justice does go out that template somewhat, doesn't it? A little bit. Uh, what, why can we describe Dead End Justice? A little bit offbeat, but strangely compelling. And yes, that debut album is is a little bit rough and raw around the edges, but it's still a great listen, isn't it? Queens and Noise came up next. Uh, generally, I think a more polished album in terms of songwriting and production, but it still carries plenty of punch. For example, the title track, Born to be Bad, and, and Neon Angels on the Road to Ruin in particular. The first two albums didn't set the world alight as, as far as sales go, other than in Japan. And uh, Japan took to, took to Runaways in a big way. Girls toured over there, did be a live album, live in Japan, which we've also got here, and that captures how, how raw the, 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 and energetic that they were live you know they, they didn't leave anything behind did they when they performed Sherry Curry left the band not like afterwards of course the band remained a quartet after that Joan Jett took over uh, lead, lead vocals and, and general fronting duties and the next studio album Waiting for the Night I think in my opinion is, is their best one took things up another notch uh, more, more muscular heavier stuff, lots of chunky hooks, huge choruses uh, amongst Lita Ford's ever-present guitar. We've got like songs such as Little Sister, Wasted, Wait For Me and School Days, for example. Uh, School Days for me perhaps sums up what the Runaways were all about in one song. Short, punchy, energetic, heavy, catchy, Joan Jett's snarling vocals, Marvellous stuff that that song is. I'd say that, that that's the Runaways in three or four minutes, right, right there. After that, things started to fall apart a bit for the band, and by the time that the, their final album came out, and now the Runaways, it, it wasn't looking great, was it? You know, the uh, the, the, the album is lacklustre. It, it's not got too much to recommend it. it they, they were phoning it in and going through the motions, I think, on that one, um, but. Everything that came before it is is classic stuff. And so th th this box set is is a fine way to have all all five albums together with that booklet in box set clamshell, and enjoy a band who set the pace for for many female bands that came afterwards, 
and left behind them such a, an, an excellent legacy of, of albums to enjoy, you know, but we'll, we'll ignore the final one. Uh, I'll drop a link to the box set on Amazon in the description below if you'd like to go and have a look at it. I, I got mine pre-ordered a few days ago. I think I paid about £30, which is, in, in my book, that's, that's value for money. Uh, so that, that link is in the description below. Um, please subscribe to the channel before you go. That'd be great, really would. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening and take care.